What's good? It's your boy TD and I'm back again with another video from Fantasy Good Sports, guys. And today's video, which is a sad one, guys, is what happened to Vincent Jackson in Florida. Yes, I said it. What happened to Vincent Jackson in Florida? So, if some of y'all, I know I'm a little older than some of my viewers, so let me break down who Vincent Jackson was, guys. Vincent Jackson was a wide receiver who played for the San Diego Chargers and also the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, before I go forward with any more breakdown, I'm going to read an article from ESPN, guys. And I want to, you know, quote this. It's from ESPN. And go check it out on ESPN. Just type, go to ESPN format and type in Vincent Jackson dies in Florida at the age of 38. So, this is what the article says, guys. The Hillsborough County, Florida Sheriff Office said Monday it is investigating the death of former NFL wide receiver Vincent Jackson. The 38-year-old Jackson was found dead at approximately 11.30 a.m. on Monday at the Homewood Suites in Brandon, Florida. So he was in Brandon, Florida, guys. Police said there was no apparent signs of trauma and the Hillsborough County Medical Examiner Office will determine the cause of death. So they don't even know yet, guys. According to the hotel staff, Jackson, who is South, who is a South uh, Temple resident, checked into the hotel on January the 11th, 2021. So, you know, he'd been there for a couple of days. And had been staying in the room since that date. Jackson family reported him missing on Wednesday. And a formal report was filed Thursday, but police found Jackson at the Homewood Suites on Friday, the missing person case was canceled after Jackson's well-being was checked. The article also says, My heart aches for the many loved ones Vincent Jackson leaves behind from his wife and children. Guys, that's sad. He had a wife and children. To the Buccaneers Nation that adored him. Mm. Sheriff Chad Cronister said in statement, Mr. Jackson was devoted man who put his family in and community above everything else. Football aside, he touched countless lives through the his Jackson, through his Jackson in Action 83 Foundation. That's the name of his uh foundation. It's Jackson in Action 83. We shared a passion for supporting military families. And three years ago, Jackson was even made an honorary deputy by the Hillsbury County Sheriff's Office to recognize his dedication to the community. He will be sorely missed by not only football fans across the country, but also people here in Hillsborough County who reap the benefits of his generous contributions. Jackson last played in the NFL in 2016, guys. And I think he was, really wasn't that good that season, but he was a good player at it for a short prime. He, he was, so I'm going to get to that later. They said Jackson last played in the NFL in 2016 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The team with which he spent his final five seasons of his career. He is ranked fourth in franchise history with 4,326 catches. I mean, receiving yards. I'm sorry, guys. Not, he had that many catches. It's tremendous, right? I'm sorry. Receiving yards. And 10th with 268 receptions. He played his first seven seasons with the Chargers, and that was really his main prime. The last four years of that, of uh, him playing with the Chargers, he was a best jump ball receiver and they said who selected him in the second round he was a second round pick from william and mary uh 61st overall and in 2005 draft he he tied and his tie for eighth in franchise history for touchdown receptions he had 37 touchdown receptions for the san diego Chargers. they were singing diego then guys and his 10th in receiving yards were fi almost 5,000 with 4,754 yards uh, overall, he had four, 540 catches and 9,080 yards and 57 touchdowns and was selected to three Pro Bowls in his 12-season career. Those three Pro Bowls, I think, was in San Diego, if I'm not mistaken. So, guys, let me kind of get some of my breakdown. I wanted to read the article to y'all. And also, guys, go and check out the article for yourself. I know I'm regurgitating this. and you, There's other articles on them, too. Guys, um... 
Vincent Jackson, this is sad, he was only 38 years old. So one of the re reasons I'm doing this video, guys, I don't know what happened, and I'm not going to start, like, you know, guessing what happened, but he was, guys, you have to live life to the fullest. No matter who you are, if you love sports, if you're just a job working man, no matter who you are, live life to the fullest because we don't never know when we might leave this earth. And he had kids and a wife, and that's sad. I have a son, and that makes me sad that, 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 he won't be able to be taught by Vincent to be the football because Vincent probably won't even play football or if he has a son. I don't know if he has a son, but if he does, guys, that's sad. And if you have a daughter, that's a very that's even more important. You know how important a um, father is to the do a daughter, um, vice versa. So let me break down some of Vincent Jackson games and how he was, guys. And I want you to go on YouTube and search him and look him up and see what kind of player he was. But, guys, he was a great jump ball receiver. He was like 6'5". And he wasn't that fast, but he was big and strong and had good hands, especially in his years in San Diego with the Chargers. Um, he had a short prom, um, but he got a bag. Temple played him real nice. So, um, I don't think he had the quarterback support that he needed in Temple like he did with Phillip Rivers. Phillip Rivers was the guy throwing him the ball. Phillip loved to throw it up to him. Him and... And Malcolm Floyd, they, they had a lot of big, tall receivers. And they kind of got away from that when they drafted Keenan Allen because they felt like they wasn't going to get him over the hunt. But he played with like Danny Ann and all those. They had a nice team there. Uh, Sean Merriman was a defense. Merriman from Maryland was a defensive player from there. I think him and um, Vincent was also cool. And, um, guys, just check him out, man. Um, The guy was, I, I mean, if it was one-on-one -on -one and Phillip would throw that. That's why Phillip threw um, through a lot of interceptions, I feel like late on in his career, because I feel like he was he had got like baby. I don't mean that in a bad way, but I feel like he had got baby by having a six five six five receivers. He wasn't the only one there, but he was the tallest. And by having a six five receiver, guys, you know if you one on one, I'm throwing it up. He, he you're not gonna pick it, so it's either my my receiver gonna catch it or he's gonna knock it down. You're not gonna pick it nine times out of ten. So guys, I'm not gonna go much on into this story because I don't really don't know any more else that uh, any more details to the story. But, guys, I wanted you to check this out. Like I said, I, this is the ESPN article that I read you. And I thought Vincent Jackson was a really good receiver. I think he kind of, you know, at that point in time, tall receivers was the thing. And he was a prototypical hybrid with that. Like, you hadn't seen a guy 6'6 six, six, that could run 4'5", four, high 4'5", four, four, low 4'6", four, with this jumping ability he had with good hands. And he was, a, you know, was a second-round pick. So, guys... Uh, make sure you uh, smash the thumbs up button on this video, guys, so we can get this video in the algorithm. And also, guys, I want you to go to the comment section and tell me what you think uh, about this situation. You know, you know, life is short, you know, and, you know, it's sad that this guy had to leave us. So comment and let me know what you think about the guy. If you got any questions, um, I, I will, like, respond to your questions in the comment section. And also, guys, I'm going to keep giving you cutting-edge videos like this. Thank you. Have a blessed day.